The following is a hoop ball presentation. Hoop ballers, welcome back. Another edition, another episode of Today and Sports Betting. It is I, Devin Ellington, your host at DALE007 on Twitter. This is at Hoopball Gaming. We are a hoop ball.com presentation. You can find them at Hoopball Tweets and at Hoopball Fantasy on Twitter also. Today's presenting sponsor is Manscaped. Go over to manscaped.com and use promo code HOOPBALL20, H-O-O-P-B-A-L-L-2-0 to get free shipping and 20% off of your purchase, the Lawnmower 3.0, as well as their other products. The Lawnmower 3.0 has fully water resistant technology. It's a full on electric razor trimmer. Really great product, super smooth. And then couple it with some balms and ointments and other care products, and you got yourself a nice pampering collection. Again, the promo code is Hoopball20, H O O P B A L L 20. Manscaped.com. Do it. Today's show. It's going to be a little bit shorter, but that doesn't mean that what's included is not important. There's some really, really new things going on with hoop ball that's very exciting that I will unpack. I'm also going to preview the Tuesday night action. We got three games in the MAC tomorrow night. I will be bartending a cornhole tournament, so got to get on it early, guys. I think we'll see some line movements, and I'll talk about that. And then also, I think we have a Monday night football game or something. Uh, I think they're calling it a football game. Patriots, Jets, um, we'll leave it at that. We'll still talk about it because I think there's some cool prop bets to maybe get in on. And then, I don't know, maybe a first half Jets bet. I haven't decided. And then college basketball, the first AP poll came out already today. Gonzaga opened as the number one for the first time in program history, getting 28 votes versus Baylor getting 24. Baylor is at number two. We'll talk a little bit more about the pockets of teams that I think will make some interesting early season noise. Um, we'll kind of, I think I'm going to preview a little bit of this Maui field. It moved to Raleigh this year. Um, so let's keep that uh, in mind because it's going to be like the Rowley Maui Invitational or something. So make sure to uh, listen up as we dive into these things. All right. Let's go ahead and talk about Monday Night Football first. I think that'll be a good thing to go ahead and just get out of the way and uh, move on from it. So Edelman's out, obviously. He's got that knee injury going on. And then we also have a uh, conundrum with, um, you know, Joe Flacco starting for the Jets. And um, on top of that, both of these offenses look pretty rank and not very enjoyable to watch. The efficiency numbers are very, very low. Um, Frank Gore is still being used as the running back in New York. I think he's like almost 50 years old. Um, Cam Newton just does not seem to understand, uh, this Patriots offense. They got a bunch of undrafted guys around him. I want to make sure there's a, all right. Yeah. That's why I thought there was three defensive players for the Patriots that were ruled out. Nikhil Harry's going to be out with a concussion. They're going to be down Julian Edelman, like I said. Jawan Bentley, linebacker, Stephon Gilmore, cornerback, Lawrence Guy, defensive lineman, all out for the Patriots. 
Then they still got questionable tags on Shalit Calhoun, Damian Harris, which I think Damian Harris is supposed to go. Ryan Izzo, J.C. Jackson, Shaq Mason, John Simon, Joe Thune on the offensive line, Dietrich Wise, and then another uh, offensive lineman and Isaiah Wynn. Lots of guys on this injury report. Tons. Tons, tons, tons. The Patriots injury report is crazy. Um, but on the Jets front, Quentin Williams is doubtful. Um, Jamison Crowder is probable. Rashad Perriman is probable. Just looking over, make sure there's not anything too crazy. Right now, uh, Frank Gore is questionable with a hand injury, but he's probably going to go. Connor McGovern on the offensive line is questionable. I think there's about 40 names on these injury reports collectively. So the opening line, obviously, you know, Patriots the favorite. They're going on the road to the Meadowlands. Nine and a half point favorites. I think it's gone up to 10 uh, by now. I went ahead and got my nine and a half. Um, it opened at seven. Over oh, under 41 and a half. It's come down from the 42 and a half. I mentioned a couple different things as far as first half numbers. Patriots first half team total, uh, 12 and a half. Kind of looks enticing especially if their defense is going to be down all those guys because uh, they're not going to be able to, um, you know, they're probably going to make, I don't know, I'm not saying the Jets are going to score a ton of points, but, you know, a couple extra possessions um, right away, maybe in the early parts of the game to allow the Patriots to get more looks. And, um, you know, 12 and a half is not a lot. So that's just a couple of touchdowns. There is a little bit of juice on it, minus 165 in some spots, minus 150. You know, I wouldn't mind it at minus 150, minus 145. Um, the Jets give up 6.1 yards per play. Um, yeah, I mean, it's... The Patriots are going to be able to move the ball. I mean, that's given against this Jets defense. Um, look for Cam Newton to maybe get a little bit more involved on the ground game. I'm liking the Jacoby Myers anytime touchdown at plus 130, 140. So that's going to be a prop play that I take. I'm looking to see – right now I'm kind of trying to go over some stats to look and see how these teams – you know, I want to see what the Jets give up um, as a defensive unit in the first half uh, before I pull the trigger. And then I also want to look at, you know, like uh, time of possession uh, or possession share in the first half to see if the Patriots, in fact, can put together a decent first half. So, the Jets give up 17.6 first half points per game. That's pretty, pretty sizable. Pretty sizable. And I'm going to go ahead and check out. Let's see uh, who does what in the first half points per game. Wow. Wow. New England is 31st, seven points per first half. The Jets are 32nd, six points per first half. New England defensively first in first half situations only give up 10 points per first half, though. So I did not know New England was that low. Now it's going to really come down to timeshare and whatnot for me. Um, New England's 24th, 47.82% of the time share in the first half. And the Jets, 
the Jets are actually 52.5. So they get the ball a lot in the first half compared to their opponents, probably because they get scored on quite a bunch. So that could be skewed a little bit. It's not because they have like a good offense or they play ball control. But they are eighth in first half time share possession percentage. Again, probably because of that terrible, terrible defense. Atlanta's number four. One, two, three is San Fran, Green Bay, and New Orleans. Good offenses. Number five and six, the L.A. teams, Chargers and Rams. Number seven, Philly. Nine, Buffalo. Ten, Carolina. So I think a couple of those teams are not like the others. So that being said, I'm going to go with the team total over 12.5 for the Patriots. I like them the full game, minus 9.5. I think Jacoby Myers will have a decent game. One of these random Patriots running backs will pop off for probably two touchdowns. This could be a Rex Burkhead game. And um, the Jacoby Myers anytime touchdown at plus 140 is probably what I'm looking at in this game, and I'm going to go ahead and stay away from everything else. There's probably a little too much action on this game anyways. If Cam Newton puts up a dud and a stinker against um, this Jets team, then, you know, that, that's just going to be really, really embarrassing. He has lost 12 of his last 14 starts dating back to 2018. With only 190.5 yards per game, two touchdowns, and seven interceptions as a passer. Hmm. Yeah, expect some Jacoby Myers and Demir Bird action tonight. Maybe take a prop on their over receiving yards. I like Jacoby Myers better. Demir Bird's just got a lot of speed. He's a little bit of a one-trick pony. Okay, let's move on to the college ba- uh, college football sector. And I'm going to talk about the MAC. Got three games to handicap on that, which I will be doing so. But you know, before I do all that, I talked about that exciting stuff on the Friday show about hoop ball and whatnot and what we were rolling out. Um, we've got hoop ball premium now. We always have the hoop ball premium over at hoop-ball.com in regards to getting some fantasy basketball content. But now there's the hoop ball fantasy pass. We got the hoop ball wager pass. We got the DFS pass from our DFS professionals like Micah Pratria, Santino Cacone, and Miles Hartley. We got Britton Eckersley, Aaron Asmus, and Stephen Williams, also all really phenomenal professionals in the DFS sector. I'm going to have, you know, a Discord uh, chat with those professionals with the DFS pass. The wager pass is pretty self-explanatory. You know, we're, you're going to get the premium content views and uh, picks from us, the professionals here on Hoop Ball Gaming, and then Dan Bespris, our leader um, here within Hoop Ball um, and Hoop Ball Gaming. He used to be a betting whiz uh, over at pregame.com before his time here with HootBall. And Aaron Bruski, our uh, founder and president of the website and this whole operation, he was with Roto World and NBC before he founded HootBall. And the Fantasy Pass is going to offer you the Bruski 100, which is the top 150 draft guide prospects. And then you'll also get in-season premium tools uh, fantasy appraiser articles and interactive shows. Um, yeah, it's going to be a phenomenal fantasy basketball season for those who choose to make a small little investment so that way they can win their league. Um, his ranking system and uh, his rankings as far as fantasy basketball, this is Aaron I'm speaking of, has been you know uh, the industry leader for the last 10 years. His projections and his rankings have been spot on um, it, it's going to be a really fun experience for uh, people that get it. We've already got some of them, a uh, good amount of them flying out. We just launched them today. So keep an eye out on Twitter for where you can find more of that information. You can always go back over to hoop-ball.com. You'll see the banners, you'll see the products. It's going to be a great, great, great piece of content for you, multiple pieces of content. Hoop Ball Premium or Hoop Ball 360. 
I would definitely recommend checking it out. Then I want to talk about the other show sponsor in mybookie.ag. Use HoopBall as your promo code. You'll get a 100% initial deposit match, and you're going to also receive a $10 free futures bet. MyBookie.ag, you bet, win, get paid. HoopBall is that promo code. All right, well, we're getting into some action here. You know, I post all my plays over on Tally site. It is a platform for many and many, many of professionals, people from like the Athletic and SB Nation, the Locked On Podcast Network, CBS Sports, Jerry Palm is on there. You got ESPN writers, you got, man, all sorts of competition. Trey Wingo, you know, is on there. I thought that was kind of funny. But yeah, you'll find my plays posted there. I always you know, keep it updated in the Action Network also, which is a tool of mine that I like to use. It's not an affiliate of here and that Hoop Ball Gaming. But it is a great betters tool, and I would recommend it to anyone that wants to help their handicapping or their recreational bet takes. The first mat game is going to be Kent State, minus 20.5 point favorites on the road at Bowling Green. And the first thing I'm looking for in this game is uh, if Kent State is going to continue their streak of success. They, the, the Flashes have won six games in a row now, dating back to last year. And then Bowling Green State also returned next to nothing in regards to their 2019 production, which wasn't a lot anyways. And then, you know, the biggest thing for me is that the fact is – Kent State features a balanced offense that can be explosive in multiple ways, led by Dustin Crum, quarterback Dustin Crum. Um, it could be easily stated that, you know, Kent State could rely on the run game in this game. We're expecting about 20 mile per hour wins. They do have a strong, strong run game. And, uh, you know, Dustin Crum, he could get his name called come draft season. Uh, he's a He's got a high PFF grade. He had a high PFF grade from last year, pro football focus. And then he, too, can run the ball. Um, I think he ran for five or seven attempts last week with about 35 yards and a touchdown. They use him once they get down into the, you know, within the 30-yard line. Um, so he, he's a pretty athletic guy. He doesn't look like it. And then he's got a cannon. He's got a cannon. He's got a couple of really great weapons around him, too. I believe his lead receiver is, uh, I want to say, Isaiah McCoy. Real explosive. Wide out. Lots of speed. Lots and lots of speed. And uh, pretty good route runner, actually. I was watching him play last week. Very, very, very clean runner. He had eight for 104 and a touchdown last week. Average 13 a catch. Another guy to maybe look out for, Dante Cephas. Six catches for 47 yards last week. Give you a couple running backs to maybe look at. Kent State's got a bevy of guys that can tote the rock. Xavier Williams, seven for 55 last week, 7.9 yards per carry with a touchdown. Then you got Brian Bradford, had 12 carries. And then you got Marquez Cooper, with 16 carries. So you got three guys that were getting about 10 looks, four guys. I mean, because Dustin Crum ran at eight times. So expect the ground game to be in full swing. Give me Kent State probably in the first half because I think that ground game is going to be, you know, ex- you know, something that they use a lot. So I'm worried about that 20 and a half number. You know, it's come up from the 17 and a half. Um, I could see them easily winning by 21 or 24 points, though. So I'm not really, really worried about it, but I just don't know if they are going to solely just, you know, run, 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 run. So um, I'm also looking at the over because Bowling Green gives up a lot of big plays. Um, They don't really stop anything. And Kent State, you know, they they can give up some points. So... um, yeah, 58 is not a big number at all, in my opinion, for some action. Those wins, I am a little worried about it. But, um, 
we'll see how it goes. I like Kent State in the first half. Let's see if we got any team totals or anything up. Um, looks like 39 for Kent State. It's a little high for me. Um, I was hoping to maybe catch something a little bit better. But maybe we'll find something, you know, within the next day. Moving on to Ohio as a 26-point favorite on the road in Akron. Total is at 57. I'm going to keep this one short. I'm looking at the over 57. Um, Ohio has a quarterback in Curtis Rourke, redshirt freshman, who seemed to fill in quite nicely for his older brother, who started the last three years for the Ohio Bobcats. Akron was blown out at home versus Western Michigan last week in the season opener, 58-13. to Meanwhile, um, these Bobcats of Ohio lost a close game to the Mac contender in Central Michigan. They lost 27 to 30. So look for the Bobcats to be up at half and to unleash their offense. Um, Curtis Rourke, uh, that kid looked pretty good last week. He looked pretty, pretty good. So keep an eye out on him and starting off with two overs in the Mac. Life's too short to bet unders, unless it's a very smart, smart bet to make. Then I think this is going to be the easier one of the night. Um, Buffalo minus nine and a half um, at home against Miami of Ohio. So here's the first big, big kicker here. Um, Miami of Ohio is the defending match champs, but helping them along that route last year was the fact that they were 5-0 and and winning one, you know, one possession games. And then their freshman all-MAC, all you know, uh, freshman of the year quarterback, Brett Gabbert, he returned this year, um, was knocked out of last game, looking like he may not play. And then the backup quarterback, A.J. Mayer, now he looked – he filled in real nicely, you know, he, I think he threw for over 250 yards, had, you know, a good chunk of completions. But um, this Buffalo defense is no joke. They have those two line, linemen, DNs, and uh, I want to say Rick, oh, Riggins. And uh, here, I'm going to find it. I'm going to find it. I will find it. Malcolm Koontz and uh, Riggins. Yes, yeah, yeah. Can't remember Riggins' first name. But um, on top of being down Brett Gabbert for the Red Hawks of Miami, Ohio, um, they're going to be playing without their two main running backs also from last year and this year that they were going to rely on, and Tyre Shelton and Jalen Bester. And this is a Miami team that was in the bottom, you know, 10 or 20 of teams in, uh, you know, efficiency ratings on offense and line yards allowed and um, – so, I mean, it's not a team that controls the line of scrimmage. Buffalo is. And I think that having a new quarterback in there, or even if um, somehow Gabbert does play, um, you know, without those two running backs and a shifted around offensive line, they do have some pretty decent talent on the offensive line, Miami of Ohio does. But I don't think it's going to be enough to, you know, stop this Buffalo team from wrecking and creating some havoc. So they ranked 122nd in line yards last year and 98th in sack rate. Um, they have talented seniors, like I said, in NFL potential in center Danny Godlewski and then left tackle Tommy Doyle. They've got three other projected starters that got valuable experience last season as young people, as young guys on the line, but they need more consistency. But... Uh, being down your whole backfield is just pretty, pretty, pretty rough. Um, Buffalo needs to stop Miami to, from getting to their quarterback. Buffalo actually – or I'm sorry, Miami was actually pretty good at that um, last year. Um, and then they need to stop Jack Sorensen for Miami, who's Miami's uh, best wide receiver threat. I think he had like seven for 130, 103 – last week um pretty 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 good but buffalo's defense is the class of the mac and their offense features some playmakers as well as some really good efficiencies um on that side of the ball 
real briefly, I'm going to talk about a couple other lines that I've already locked in and what I've already looked at for the next or this upcoming week. Of course, I'm rolling with my Chanticleers going on the road as the 15th ranked team in the country, minus 8.5 at Troy. I'm looking at under 46.5 in TCU in West Virginia. Looking at over 67.5 in West, uh, I'm sorry, Wake Forest and North Carolina. Um, and then, oh yeah, so I guess I should have told you also that I'm taking Buffalo minus nine and a half tonight, or tomorrow. I like Buffalo in that spot. It's a really good spot. Um, so yeah, those are a couple other lines that I was looking at for college football. We'll get to a full on nitty gritty breakdown, um, as we go through the week, but that are, that, wow, I can't talk. Those are my general thoughts to open this college football can so like i said we have a wonderful wonderful thing about to start that's college basketball i am beyond stoked for it it's going to be a fun season we had a lot of unfinished business from last year because of covid shutting it down as we were about to get march madness how devastating that was, but here is college basketball again. Tournament's going to be in Asheville. I said Raleigh for the Maui Invitational, so I was in correct. And the teams in this Invitational, I'll tell you what, you got Alabama, Texas, Stanford, Davidson, Indiana, Providence, North Carolina, and the UNLV Running Rebels. I am definitely um, looking forward to this tip-off tournament, and I am excited for this field. You know, if I'm going to say, you know, watch out for a little dark horse in this tournament, look out for Stanford. They're returning a decent amount of guys. That coach that they have is in his third year, and he's been getting more and more better recruits, phenomenal recruits, strong recruiting classes. And then uh, UNLV. Um, I like Stanford and UNLV to maybe upset a you know team or two within this Maui Invitational and make a deep run. Um, as f- far as the opening um, games, UNLV is taking on North Carolina. Stanford will be playing Alabama. Indiana takes on Providence first, and then Texas and Davidson. So some really good matchups, really good matchups, and I'm excited for those. Um, To talk a little more about the rankings of what just came out, um, I'll speak briefly. You know, we'll we'll talk about these rankings, Um, maybe, you know, just some major spots. But, you know, top five uh, is going to be Gonzaga, Baylor, Villanova, Virginia, Iowa. And then there's a little cluster in the middle that I thought was really interesting. Um, You know, pretty much 13 to 16, we got – Michigan State, Texas Tech, West Virginia, so a couple big 12 schools. Then there's North Carolina. And then Houston's at 17. And then 23, 24, 25 are three big 10 schools in Ohio State, Rutgers, and Michigan. So there are some teams that, you know, are looking to build off of what they did last year and then what they did not get to finish as far as their accomplishments and accolades. Gonzaga being one, being one of those teams. Um, I think Michigan, as well as Illinois. Illinois sitting at number eight. Illinois returned their two main guys in uh, Kofi Coteburn, as well as Ayu Jasamo, who is a Naismith National Player of the Year watch uh, list guy. He could be a finalist. Um, kid is very, very talented. He was going to go to um, the NBA. And he did not. And so he came back to play again with his team. And this, um, you know, they, they were hoping to win the Big, Big Ten whenever, um, whenever everything was getting all crazy um, towards the end of the year. So um, here's another, you know, our first – tournament that's um, 
the first tournament that's going to be going and taking place is the fact of the matter of the Gulf Coast Showcase in Estero, Florida. It's going to be um, – right now there's six teams for sure locked in, two teams to be announced just because of, you know, the COVID flexibility and everything you need to, uh, you know, keep in mind for and keep in mind of. But right now we got Abilene Christian, the Akron Zips, which if you remember to – the college basketball season last year with the show, I was huge on the zips and hoping that they were going to get a 12 seed in the tournament and make a decent run. Then there's East Carolina, we got Indiana state who could be a sleeper to win this whole tournament if they can beat Akron and then middle Tennessee blue Raiders and then the Omaha Mavericks. And then the battle for Atlanta is always a really fun tournament. Um, but we're not going to have it this year. The Bad Boy Mowers Crossover Classic is replacing the Battle for Atlantis, and it's going to be in Sioux Falls, South Dakota, instead of Atlantic City. West Virginia and Texas A&M are going to be playing. Ohio State's going to be taking on Memphis. Creighton's going to be playing Utah. Dayton's going to be taking on Wichita State. And that is your field. That'll be a very, very fun fun bracket to keep an eye on. And then there's the Bubbleville. Bubbleville tournament. November 25th to the 27th. Got Florida Gators taking on Maine. St. Peter's out of the MAAC is going to be taking on Virginia. So right now it's just one pod. Um, Bubbleville is going to feature Two pods. Yeah, so two pods. So that was pod one. Pod two is going to be um, Rhode Island taking on Stephen F. Austin. That'll be a great, great matchup. Stephen F. Austin beating Duke last year. I don't know if you remember, but Duke turned the ball over with five seconds left. The Stephen F. Austin player ran the length of the court and laid the ball up at the buzzer to beat Duke by one. They were down by one at the time. Um it was exciting. And then Towson is taking on Rhode Island. And then you got St. Bonnie's um, that's going to be participating as well in that tournament. So those are a couple of the early season tournaments, early tip-offs. going to be some uh, schedule changes, obviously, to accommodate whatever may come our way before we get to those games. Um, and I think that about does it. You know, I covered Monday Night Football, did some college football, got the Mac previewed. I'm going to be putting an article up on hoopdashball.com, and that article is going to give you some bets, going to be submitting some best bets for the wager pass, so keep an eye out on that. And there's lots and lots of exciting stuff going on, and we're going to have lots and lots to talk about this week. So stay tuned. Keep the eyes and ears peeled, fully open. You know where to find us on Twitter, but I will remind you, and that's at D-A-L-E-007 on Twitter, at Hoopball Gaming. This was a hoop-ball.com presentation. Don't forget about Hoopball 360 and going to check out the products. Even if you are into um, the subscription thing, you can pass it on to someone that maybe does play fantasy basketball who would like to get some extra insight. You know, we know it's not for everyone, but you know, this is really great content. So we don't want folks who would be interested to miss out. Again, I am Devin Ellington and uh, at DALA007 on Twitter. That, that's about it. That's that's pretty, pretty self-explanatory. But once again, thank you again, folks. Please do leave a five-star review on Apple Music, over on YouTube Music. Now that Google Play was absorbed by them, you can subscribe and follow the show on Spotify, iHeart. Um, leave reviews over at hoop-ball.com. You can DM me on Twitter. You can get all of our information on Twitter and shout us out and do constructive or deconstructive criticism and uh, give us some insight and intake and all that good stuff. I bid you do. I am sending you all of my good vibes and all of my good energies. And until next time, y'all be safe.
This has been a Hoop Ball presentation.